The Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of Crimes on a Merry-Go-Round. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. What on earth are you two doing? Playing ring toss. Ring toss? Uh Uh-huh. Well, those are the smallest rings I've ever seen. They look more like the ones you get on a merry-go-round than quoits. Well, that's exactly what they are. Rhoda and I are just having a little game with them, Alan. Well, you're not supposed to bring those things home for the merry-go-round, you know. You're supposed to throw them back. Oh, these are our own. They were given to us. An odd sort of present, I must say. Well, these are an odd sort of ring. Why, no, they're not. They're just the usual merry-go-round rings. That's what the police thought, too, Alan. Well, what have the police got to do with them? They gave them to us. Look, unless I'm awfully wrong, you're all talking double talk. Well, you're wrong. Well, Blackstone, perhaps you'd better tell Alan the story. All huh? right, I will. Well, the police came to me one morning, Alan, and asked me to investigate a dope ring. They had traced the dope to a carousel that played in the park. And they had traced the dope away from the merry-go-round. But they couldn't find the connecting link. That was my job. So Rhoda and I set out the carousel. Oh, golly, there it is. Uh You know, I think no matter how old you are, that sound always means excitement. Yes, it seems to take you back to the days when riding on a merry-go-round was the greatest thrill in the world. I guess I'm a perpetual ingenue then. It still is the greatest thrill for me. Now, look, kid, you shut up. But he took it. He took my ring. Well, you weren't supposed to swipe it anyway. I grabbed it, didn't I? I guess I won it, I guess. And the man just took it away from Well, look me. here, you. You stop that corner walling. You get away from here. Stay with the record of the merry-go-round going all the time. That's all the noise I can stand. Now, you either shut up or scram, see? Oh, what's the matter, kid? Oh, he tried to swipe one of them brass rings to the merry-go-round, and one of the guards made him give it back. It wasn't no guard. It was just a guy. And he put it in his own pocket. Two adults, one child, please. Child? Who's that for? I thought we might take our tragic young friend here for another spin. Oh, gee, mister, that's swell. Now, come on, then, young one. Say, thanks for taking them away. I couldn't stand that crying no more. Oh, oh look, Blackstone. There's a zebra, just like the one on the carousel at home. I want to ride on that. All right, you go ahead. I'm going to travel more sedately in this chariot. Oh, that sissy stuff. It just stands still. We like the ones that go up and down. I'm going to ride on the rooster. I rode on a zebra last time. <laughs> okay. Um, up you go. Thanks, miss. Now, me for my zebra... Hey, quit that shove. Out of my way, out of my way. That's my zebra. I'm going to ride on it. That's what you think, lady. I got it. Oh, now, come on. I used to ride on that zebra when I was a kid, and I... Man, that lady, you ain't a kid no more, and I'm riding it. Uh, oh, would you come back here with me, Rhoda? <sighs> oh, the other seats are taken, so I guess I'll have to, but I did want to ride on that zebra. What, didn't you ever see anything like that guy? Maybe he rode on a zebra, too, when he was a kid. Yeah, maybe. He looks more like the ostrich type to me. Hey, lady, that's the bum that stole my ring. Huh? Whee! Here we go! Rhoda, I want you to get off. Quick, before the merry-go-round goes too fast. Call O'Reilly at headquarters. Tell him to be here fast. But... Hurry now. Okay, boss. Hey, where'd the lady go? Oh, she had to make a phone call. But uh, you and I'll have our ride. Uh, What do you say now? Let's try to catch the rings, eh? Okay. Whee! Oh! I almost got one. <laughs> Good. Well, now, try again. Oh. Hey, gosh, that mean guy on the zebra's got one. Yeah, well, now, you see if you can. Then he's get got one. another. He's throwing it back into the clown's mouth now. But he kept the first one. Yes, so I noticed. And now he's got another. And he isn't throwing that one back either. Wee! I got one. Good for you. <laughs> the guy on the zebra missed it. <laughs> uh, may I see it, Petey? Well, sure, mister. Here you are. Thank you. I, uh, I think I'll keep this one, Petey, if you don't mind. I'll give you another ride for it. Oh, gee, swell. 
Uh, you stay on, kid. I'll arrange with the cashier. I, uh, I want to arrange for our young friend here to have another ride, miss. Sure. Go inside the booth. I beg your pardon? None of that. Get inside there, like I said. This hand in my pocket means business. I can shoot from the hip. Say, what do you mean, bringing that guy in here? Now, I told you to stay away from me while you're on the job. Hand over that ring. I don't know what you're talking about. I said hand it over. Now, really, don't you think this is going a little too don't far? Don't give me none of your lip. I saw you pocket the ring the kid grabbed from me. What do you want with it? That's none of your business. I think it is. My trigger finger's itching, mister. Now, listen, you. I don't want no killings around here. I'm Boss says if you... sure I don't know what this is all about. But if you just let me out of here... I'll tell you, give me that ring. Very well. Here it is. Mm. The feel of a gun in some guy's ribs always makes him cough up, huh? Hey, this ain't the right ring. I beg your pardon? Don't go on saying I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon all the time. This ain't the right ring. I tell you. Now you see what you've done. That guy was just swiping the ring and you go and have to act up like this. You got us all in trouble. This guy will sing to the cops just as sure as soon as he gets out he of here. He ain't you... getting out of here. Not alive, that is. Well, you ain't going about nobody in here. I'll give you one more chance, mister. Do you want to go out under your own power or do you want to be carried out? It's up to you. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. I gave you the ring you asked for, and Okay, that's... if that's the way you want to play it, take a deep breath. It's got to last you a long time. Now, nothing here you don't. One, two... He's in there. I can see him, officer. The cops. Well, this guy ain't going to be alive to meet him. No? Well, take that. We're coming, Blackstone. Oh, I've got your gun. Stand back, both of you. All right, O'Reilly. Here's your dope peddler. And here's a little dope to use as evidence. Tell me, Blackstone, what did the rings have to do with the dope, and how did you know? Well, it was very simple, really, Alan. So simple that it, well, it was almost foolproof. Until you came along, that is. We knew that the merry-go-round was where the peddlers were getting their merchandise. But we didn't know how or from whom until we met the little boy, Pete. He gave me my first clue. I realized that there was some very great importance attached to those rings. After all, a man wouldn't take one away from a kid just for fun. And then when the crook insisted on grabbing the seat Rhoda had wanted and made such a scene about it, it all connected in my mind. Well, it hasn't in mine, yes. Well, a lot of those rings were hollow. The man who put them into the slot loaded them with dope. He timed them so that the doped ones would come down just as the zebra passed. Our friend would pocket the ring instead of throwing it into the clown's mouth. But what if someone else got one instead? Petey did, uh, by accident. Now, most people would have tossed the ring back, but Petey kept his. Generally, no one wanted them. Blackstone watched the crook on my zebra and saw him palming some of the other rings he took, and he very ostentatiously took the one from Petey and put it in his pocket so the crook could see him do it. Palming? Mm-hmm. Gee, I wish I could do that. It always seemed just like magic. Well, so that's how another mystery was solved by magic. Yes, Alan. And now, Blackstone, what is the trick? Well, the next trick I call gravity defied. You mean it's going to make us laugh? I mean I'm going to make you pop-eyed with amazement using the simplest of appliances, this coin. It's a half dollar. Now watch. I take the half dollar between the thumb and finger of my right hand. And then? I set it here upon the fingers of my left holding the left palm upward. You're setting the coin on edge. That's and it's right. just about halfway along your fingers. When I take my right hand away, what happens? But, but the coin is standing there, balanced. On the fingers of your left hand. Say, that is a trick. Only a trick, Rhoda. Well, yes, you haven't exactly defied gravity simply by balancing a coin. You mean you're expecting something more remarkable? Well, sure. Well, watch the coin. Say, well, it's beginning to tilt that one. And... And slowly, too. you think the coin was alive. Well, that's the magic in it. Gradually, the coin is lying down. Slowly. Slowly, until... It's flat on your fingers. Blackstone, what's come over that coin? Hey, can we have a look at it? Of huh? course. Here, Rhoda, take it. Wait, wait, wait. They're full of invisible magnets, but uh, <laughs> they won't hurt you, Alan. Oh, well, what bothers me is how the trick worked. I didn't think I could ever figure it out, Blackstone. Well, I'll give you a few minutes to try, Rhoda. And if you don't... I'll be back to tell you all about it. Now, 
Blackstone, I want to know what made that coin behave the way it did. You won't have to look far to find out, Rhoda. It's right here on the floor. Well, what's on the floor? An electromagnet? No, something a lot less complicated. An ordinary pin. Ah, here it is. Just an ordinary pin? How could that control the coin? Well, here's how. Before the trick, I gripped the pin like this. Let's see. Oh, yeah, between the lower knuckles of your first two fingers. Between the first two fingers of the left hand. That's where I hold the head of the pin. Oh, yeah, I see. And the point is projecting inward. Which is why I didn't close my left hand too tight. Hmm. Now for the trick. I show the coin with my right hand and bring it over to my left. What? Are you sitting the coin right against the pen? Only we can't see the pen. That's why we didn't know it was there. I remove my right hand and the coin stays balanced. Now, watch it tipped. Well, why does it do that? I simply relax my fingers and the weight of the coin bears down upon the pin until they both are flat. So now you can pass the coin to be examined. Exactly. And when I open the fingers of my left hand, the pin drops to the floor where you never look for it. Never, unless we knew... And now we know. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And so, until next time, this is Blackstone wishing you good magic and goodbye. Be with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of... The Magic Writing, and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. 